Hello viewers. Yes. This is Ranjana ma'am and you are watching yes our channel yours as well as mine. You must be wondering where is Ranjana ma'am? Yeah. So I was a bit busy with the new admissions for the current session. Anyway now we are back i am back and what will i do today yes it's julius caesar you all were asking me ma'am when you will start your julius uh, julius caesar when will you start uploading the videos scene wise yes so today it is julius caesar act 1 scene 1 i have already given you a short summary those of you who have not seen it you all can see it because it will help you to understand julius caesar better and now act 1 scene 1 so before we do you should get introduced to the characters of julius caesar who are the main characters obviously it's julius caesar who comes first he is the main protagonist but there are several other characters which hold a lot of importance so who are they so after the julius caesar then comes mark antony and marcus brutus yes so mark antony and marcus brutus then there are cassius casca trebenius ligarius decius brutus metellus cimber and cena so these are all the conspirators beginning with marcus brutus these are the conspirators who conspire against julius caesar and assassinate him on the ides of march mark antony hmm. he was a very loyal supporter of julius caesar then we have octavius caesar and lepidus they form the second triumvirate mark antony lepidus and octavius caesar he was the heir to julius caesar's property he was the successor to julius caesar but mark antony also gave a lot of contribution in taking revenge against the conspirators Then there are the two type tribunes whom you will see in Act One, Scene One. You won't find them again. They only appear in Act One, Scene One, and after that they are executed. So they are Flavius and Marius. You'll read about them in this scene only. And then there is a soothsayer. You will find that soothsayer in Act One, Scene Two, and not only that. after that in act 3 scene 1 or before uh, before act 3 scene 1 as julius caesar is going to the capital the soothsayer is there and julius caesar ridicules him then you have artemidorus he is a teacher and somehow he has got to know the conspiracy and he writes a letter to warn caesar but caesar pays no attention to him and then these are the ones who are friends to brutus and cassius who are these characters Lucilius, Titinius, Messala, young Cato, and Volumnius. Well, uh, so these are the friends. That means they form the anti-Mark Antony group, right? And then Varro, Clitus, Claudius, Strato, Lucius, Dardanius. These are the servants of Marcus Brutus. And then Pindarus. he plays a very short role he is a, he is a servant of cassius and then calpurnia calpurnia is caesar's wife there are two female characters one is calpurnia caesar's wife another is portia portia is the wife of marcus brutus it is not mark uh, in it is not portia of merchant of venice in merchant of venice portia is the central character and here she is the wife of brutus and then you have the ghost of caesar so these are the characters whom you will find in julius caesar so let's start act 1 scene 1 so in act 1 scene 1 what really happens julius caesar is supposed to come back to rome after having obtained a victory over pompey's son defeated pompey son pompey was one of the uh, triumvirate when julius caesar was in a, included in a triumvirate julius caesar pompey and crassus these three ruled this was the first triumvirate that means rule of three triumvirate triangle and then 
crashes died in a battle and after that two people ruled rome pompey and caesar and then there was a civil war in rome and pompey was defeated and now caesar returns victorious when the drama opens caesar returns is uh, returning victorious to rome after having defeated the sons of pompey so the citizens of rome they are uh, getting ready to give caesar a what should we say a thunderous welcome they have built gates and arches and all that with caesar statues well decorated they have worn their best dresses they are not in their professional uniform and as they are rejoicing two tribunes enter tribunes are also official posts so these two tribunes enter but they are not actually supporters of julius caesar they are supporters of pompey so naturally they are not happy with this that the public have put on their best dress and they are getting ready to welcome caesar so what do they do they scold them why are you in your uh, colored dresses or uh, holiday dresses or in your best dresses and then they make them aware that when pompey used to walk through the streets of rome y'all would be watching the whole day and now y'all are doing the same to caesar so won't god be displeased with you for this treachery so they make them feel guilty and public they can be easily uh, they they can be mentally changed they can change mentally they are not static they are not stable public they are supposed to be fickle minded so they feel yes he is telling the truth and they feel feel guilty they feel ashamed and then they run back to their homes and this is what flavius and marulus had wanted so they are quite happy and now also they plan to bring down the decorations on the statues of uh, julius caesar why so that when he enters rome and he finds that no one is there to welcome him the streets are deserted not all but quite a few streets deserted and there is no one to welcome him he would be disheartened and this is what flavius and marulus want but somehow later we are told that these two were caught in the act and later they were executed so this let's start act 1 scene 1 this was the beginning so that you could un, you can understand what this is about this scene is about so rome a street so where does the action take place the action takes place in a street in rome so who enters flavius marulus and certain commoners commoners means common people okay flavius so when he sees these common people in the streets he gets infuri- infuriated and what does he do hence home you idle creatures get you home is this a holiday know you not being mechanical you ought not walk upon a laboring day without the sign of your profession speak what trade art thou so flavius scolds the citizens he tells these he calls them idle creatures why because today is a working day and not they are not doing any work so he drives away tries to drive them away from the streets so go home you idle creatures lazy fellows is this a holiday this is a rhetoric question he means this is not a holiday so what are do what are you doing out in the streets you lazy fellows don't you know that you should since you all are working people you should be putting on your uniforms professional uniforms so you should not be work walking in the through the streets in an official day without the sign or the uniform which your profession which your profession with which your profession is associated so you should put on like in school i'll give you a short example in school if you go you all have different uniforms different schools have different uniforms why to identify oh this person is from dps this person is from st xavier this is from calcutta boys or whatever different different schools 
so your school dress is an identification sign in the same way in rome on working days people would put on the uniforms they different professions had different uniforms and they were supposed to wear that uniform so that when people saw you they would know oh he is a doctor oh this person is a carpenter that person is a cobbler okay so especially laboring people they put on it was the custom that they would put on their uniform on the working days so these people have not put on their working you uh, have not put on their uniforms today so he is scolding them don't you know that you should put on your uniforms on a working day so what are you doing with your best dresses on suppose everyone is wearing a school dress and you go in your colored dress so uh, won't you be scolded in school that why have you put on your colored dress earlier in our times na during birthdays we could wear we were given the freedom to wear a colored dress if we wanted so that whenever someone came in colored dress we were identified oh this person is wearing a colored dress that means it's her birthday but nowadays these are not allowed you have to put on your school uniform same here these people were required to put on their uniform professional uniform on working days but they have not not done it today why they are rejoicing they are ready to welcome julius caesar with their best dresses on and this is what makes flavius angry so he is scolding them then he catches hold of one of them and says speak what trade are thou that means which trade do you belong to tell me which trade do you belong to carpenter why sir a carpenter so he says i am a carpenter carpenter so marulus he challenges where is thy leather apron and thy rule what dost thou with thy best apparel on you sir what trade are you so marulus scolds him then if you are a carpenter where is the leather apron that you are supposed to put on that is your professional uniform why haven't you worn it where is your rule why aren't you carrying your rule in your hand so these would help the people to identify oh he is wearing a leather apron and he has a rule in his hand so he is a carpenter but this carpenter is not wearing that he has worn his best dress so why are you walking in the streets wearing your breast having put on your best dress on then he catches hold of another common person common people one of the commoners and then he asks what is your trade and now he will get some hmm, nice answers fit enough to make him angry the second citizen is a clever fellow and he knows how to play with words just see what he says truly sir in respect of a fine workman i am but as you would say a cobbler so cobbler you all know cobbler means a person who makes shoes or who mend shoes okay when your shoes get worn out there is some problem with your shoes you go to a cobbler and he mends your shoes but cobbler also has another meaning cobbler means a person who is not very good at his work so he says it very cleverly that he is a cobbler but he adds that first line that in respect to a fine workman a skilled workman i am just a cobbler he has told his profession but at the same time he has added that in respect to a fine or a skilled workman i am a cobbler it can also mean that i am not a very skilled workman i am a cobbler i am not very good at my work and that is what Ma mariulus thinks the cobbler has told his profession but mariulus thinks that this man is saying that in comparison to a skilled workman i am just a cobbler that means i am not very good at my trade but the cobbler means that he is a person who mends shoes now just see Marius will keep on asking him though he has told his profession but Marius will keep on asking him and he will give very uh, ambiguous answers but they are correct but Marius is not so intelligent enough to understand so Marius hmm. but what trade art thou answer me directly so he is telling yes you are a cobbler you are not a fine workman you you are not a skilled workman you are a cobbler but what is your trade so he doesn't understand that the man means that he is a mender of shoes 
so he thinks oh he is not a good workman and that is what he is telling me but what profession does he belong to so he charges him tell me plainly what is your profession again this man will play with words a trade sir that i hope i may use with a safe conscience which is indeed sir a mender of bad souls again souls you can understand the difference between s o u l soul and s o l e soul why because you have the book in hand but suppose the cobbler is speaking out these lines so how can someone think how can someone understand which soul he is referring to mender of bad souls can mean mender of shoes whose soles the soles of which have gone bad with the soles of which have worn out it can also mean mender of bad people bad souls means bad people so it has double meaning so he says that the trade which i follow i follow such a trade of which i am not ashamed i don't feel guilty that i am following such a trade and my job is to repair and mend the shoes or the soles of shoes which have got worn out this is what he means to say but what does he say a mender of bad souls i repair bad souls but bad souls marulus doesn't understand that he is talking about the soul of shoes the souls which are in your shoes and he again gets angry what trade thou knave thou naughty knave what trade so he is scolding him you stupid fellow you foolish fellow just tell me what is your profession i am asking your profession and you are going on beating about the bush not telling me directly but the man has said twice first he says i am a cobbler this time he says i am a mender of bad souls but the way he presents it marulus doesn't understand he gets angry now see cobbler nay i beseech you sir be not out with me but if you be out sir i can mend you see this line i can mend you it has another meaning and the first part be not out with me means something else these two outs are used in different meaning with different meanings and again it is enough to make marulus very angry so he says sir i request you be not out with me means don't be angry with me but the second part which he says if you be out sir that means if you are shoes are worn out this part if you be out sir by this he means to say if your shoes are worn out i will mend them but what does marulus think he thinks that this man is saying that if i yes if you are angry i know how to mend you i know how to make you peaceful so he is naturally angry this fellow a commoner and he is trying to uh, tell that he will mend me he will make me uh, quiet he will make me peaceful how dare he he gets very angry what meanest thou by that mend me thou saucy fellow so yes he is very angry you rude fellow you impudent fellow you can mend me do you think that you can mend me you can restore my peace of mind you can stop me from being angry you rude fellow you saucy fellow you impudent fellow so every time the cobbler is speaking and it is making marulus further angry now see mend me thou saucy fellow hmm. you mean to mend me why sir cobble you so again he says why i meant a cobble you would mean that he is as if trying to cobble marulus no he means he actually means he can mend marulus shoes but the way he presents it cobble your shoes he doesn't say he says cobble you and marulus is unable to understand and he gets further angry so this man is deliberately speaking in a double meaning way Hmm. and now flavius intervenes he understands so he says thou art a cobbler art thou so flavius says oh you are a cobbler are you 
and this part also see this part where he plays with words this part this speech of the cobbler is very important he says truly sir all that i live by is with the all two alls when you hear it you won't notice the difference but there is a difference in spelling and difference in meaning so he confesses yes sir huh. all that i live by is with the all first all means everything and the second all is a w l and what is a w l all it is the instrument used by the shoemaker it is a tool of the shoemaker he needs it to mend shoes it is a tool of the shoemaker right so he says yes my earning all that i earn i get it with the help of this all hmm. so the all helps me to earn my livelihood i meddle with no tradesman's matters nor women's matters but with all hmm. so my business is only with the all hmm. i don't get into the matters of men or women i don't interfere in the matters of men and women hmm. i only mend shoes with my all a w l all i am indeed sir a sergeant to old shoes when they are in great danger i recover them so he tell, he calls himself a sergeant of old shoes sergeants you know what they do they operate upon a patient and help him to recover and he calls himself a sergeant to old shoes when shoes are in bad condition he covers them again with good leather and makes them better he and he repairs them so that is why he also operates upon the shoes and covers them again with good leather the old leather which has worn out he throws it out and recovers them so there is a difference in the two one means recover means to convalesce getting better and the other recover means cover again so he is using again recover in two senses surgeons help the patients to recover to get well and what he does he operates upon the shoes and covers them again as proper men as ever trod upon needs le needs leather have gone upon my handiwork hmm. so he says that he can very confidently assure flavius that he has repaired the shoes of the best people of rome hmm. flavius but wherefore are not in sh thy shop today why dost thou lead these men about the street so he is one of the leaders of the team this cobbler yeah he is very good at words so flavius flavius is challenging him that you should be in your shop today today is a working day then why are you walking through the streets leading these people behind you instead of working why have you taken a holiday cobbler truly said to wear out their shoes to get myself into some work so this is a joke he says i am leading these people so that if they walk with me their shoes will get worn out and then they will come to me to mend their shoes and i will get some more work and then he says but indeed sir we make holiday to see caesar and to rejoice in his triumph and then he says that actually that means jokes apart actually we are in the streets why we have taken a holiday why to see the triumphal return of julius caesar triumphant return of julius caesar to rome hmm. and to honor his great victory we are making a holiday to see caesar we want to be happy in his victory triumph triumph means victory so we want to be happy in the victory of caesar so now marulus marulus is not intelligent and short tempered so wherefore rejoice 
what conquests brings he home what tributaries follow him to rome to grace and captive bond his chariot wheels so he says what is there to rejoice why are you rejoicing has caesar conquered any any new country has he conquered conquered any new country is he bringing prisoners to rome who should be who are following them behind his chariot so in the past when you won a victory over another country na you would take the prisoners back home tied to the chariot wheels of the victor the prisoners would be dragged to the home country of the victor and then th they would demand a sum of money that was ancient times ransom kidnapping or ransom of the past prisoners would be brought to the country of the victor and then the family would be asked to pay a huge amount of money if the money was paid this man was sent back to his country free and if the money was not paid the prisoner would become a slave of the victor okay so these prisoners would be dragged to the chariot wheels of the victor and taken to their country so he is telling mariulus is asking what is there to rejoice actually this is a civil war this is not that you are conquering another's country this is a civil war between pompey both the are romans pompey is also a roman so naturally his supporters are roman same for julius caesar so it is a fight bet between romans only no new country annexed that is why he is saying why are you rejoicing has caesar conquered any new territory and added to the boundaries of rome has he brought prisoners tied to the chariot to his chariot wheels that you all are rejoicing that means he has done nothing of that it is only one roman versus another you blocks you stones you worse than senseless things oh you hard hearts you cruel men of rome knew you not pompey so he is a supporter of pompey and he is angry that these people are rejoicing at the victory of julius caesar against pompey's sons so he is scolding them that you all are stupid people you are senseless people you all are cruel hearted people have don't you remember pompey have you forgotten him and then he reminds them what they would do when pompey used to pass through the streets that means when pompey was in power and he used to pass the streets of rome you all did this and now you all are doing the same to julius caesar that means you all don't have any loyalty you all are treacherous you all are traitors this is what he is trying to tell in this big speech so knew you not pompey this is a rhetorical question he says don't don't you know pompey don't you remember pompey that means you should know you knew pompey very well and yes he gives an instance as to how the common people would behave when pompey passed through the streets just see these lines many a time and oft have you climbed up to the walls and battlements of towers and windows ye to chimney tops your infant in your arms and there have sat the live long day with patient expectation to see the great pompey pass the streets of rome so he is telling in the past when pompey was at the height of his power and you got the news that pompey was to pass through the streets of rome what did you do you climbed the walls you climb the towers windows chimney tops why to get a good look at him in order to get a good look of him a good look of him you would climb to the higher spots maybe to the walls the towers the chimney tops only to get a good look at him only to get a glance of pompey you all did this and not only that you all sat the whole day long waiting for him to come and after that what did they do when they saw pompey's chariot proceed what did they do how did they react and when you saw his chariot but appear have you not made a universal shout 
that tiber trembled underneath her bangs to hear the replication of your sounds made in her concave shores this paragraph is very important for your reference to context okay so he says that once you saw pompey the moment you saw him appear in his chariot so what did you do the way y'all cheered the loud manner in which you cheered hey hail pompey and all that the way you cheered up hmm. on seeing pompey or rather his chariot approach so your cheers as if they were heard on the banks of the river tiber so your cheers they as if echoed echoed on the banks of the river tiber and now what are you doing now so when you saw uh, pompey's chariot you all cheered in such a manner that your voices they were echoed on the banks of the river tiber and what are you doing now he reminds them and do you now put on your best attire and do you now call out a holiday and do you now strew flowers in his way that comes in triumph over pompey's blood so he is scolding them this is what you did to pompey and now you all have changed sides you all are rejoicing at the victory of that man who is responsible for the defeat of pompey and now you all are cheering julius caesar hmm. so you all are you all have put on your best clothes and you all are not working you all have chosen this day as a holiday why so that you might show your respect to that man who comes after defeating the sons of pompey pompey's blood that means the sons of pompey so he comes after defeating the sons of pompey and you have come to honor that great man to show your respect to that man by putting on your best dress by calling a holiday be gone go home leave this place run to your houses fall upon your knees pray to the gods pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs but light on this ingratitude so in a way he makes them feel guilty of treachery y'all are disloyal towards pompey so you go back to your homes immediately kneel down fall on your knees kneel down and pray to the gods so that the gods may stop the curse which they might unleash on you for this part of un, uh, disloyalty or treachery you all have been treacherous god will punish you for your treachery by sending some curse so in order to stop the curse what should you do go home immediately kneel down and pray to the gods so what a nice way of frightening the crowd and making them leave the streets and go back to their homes so that the streets look deserted when julius caesar comes he doesn't see anyone in the streets flavius go go good countrymen and for this fault assemble all the poor men of your sort draw them to tiber banks and weep your tears into the channel till the lowest stream do kiss the most exalted shores of all so all the commoners they exuent they leave so what does flavius say flavius is a little less rude than mariolus he is clever so what does he say that yes good fellows go back home hmm. and in order to beg pardon for your sins you all have committed the sin of treachery, uh, treachery and in order to beg forgiveness for your sins gather all the common people like you the working people like you gather all of them where to the banks of the river tiber and what do you do cry cry your sins of uh, cry your tears of repentance at the sin which you have committed and so that the river tiber is over flooded even the lowest streams they reach the highest shores that means cry all of you cry and repent for your sins 
so that it seems that the lowest waters they also reach the highest shore so all of them they leave they can be easily molded they can be easily brainwashed so this is what flavius and marulus have done they have made these people feel repentant feel sorry feel guilty so they leave see whether their basis metal be not moved they vanish tongue tied in their guiltiness go you down that way towards the capital this way will i this rope the images if you find them decked with ceremonies so flavius was very happy that both of them have been successful in driving the crowd out of the streets so he says just see the the basest fellow also among the cons among these commoners also they have been affected by your words our words have had an effect even on the most uh, underrated person among these so he is happy that their words have had an effect on even the most illiterate most uh, underrated person so all of them have left so they have left in silence and they did not speak a single word why because they have been made aware of the guilt and they that is why they do not protest and they leave that means they are happy that their plan is a success none of them question the two tribunes say why shouldn't we su support julius caesar he is victorious no they have been as if made aware of a guilt for which god will curse them you have committed treachery you have been disloyal to pompey and for this god will punish you god will send a curse on you and naturally these people they feel what they say maybe it is true so they silently leave without any protest and then he orders marulus to go towards the capital and what does he do and he will take another route both won't go the same way they will take two routes and what will on their way what are they supposed to do he tells that if you see any uh, scarves put on the images of julius caesar just pull them down that means the st um, statues or the image of of julius caesar were put and they were adorned decorated well decorated so pull down the decorations from julius caesar's images if you do find them decked with ceremonies so yes if you find julius caesar's images or the statues of julius caesar well ornamented try to pull the decorations down hmm. marulus is a bit worried he is a bit frightened so he says may we do so you know it is the feast of lupercal may uh, marulus is not very confident about doing this flavius is the more daring of the two so marulus says that will it be right to do this because you are well aware that it is the festival of lupercal hmm. so since it is the festival of lupercal it wouldn't be proper to pull down because we might be caught people might see us disrobing the images of julius caesar and we might be caught and executed for trying to show disrespect to julius caesar flavius it is no matter let no images be hung with caesar's trophies i'll about and drive away the vulgar from the streets so do you to where you perceive them thick so flavius is not the least bothered he says it hardly matters yeah, so what if it is the feast of lupercal it hardly matters so he doesn't want the statues of julius caesar should be ornamented should be decorated hmm. with the signs of his victory he doesn't want that Ju julius caesar's victory should be celebrated with all pomp and show hmm. i'll about and drive the vulgar from the streets by vulgar he means the common people lower class people so he will go and on his way if he sees gathering of crowds like he has done here if he sees similar gatherings in the streets which he is following he will drive these people away that lower class people away from the streets as he has done just now he will do that 
and he tells Marulus also to do the same. Why? Because they are taking two. At this moment, they were together. But now Marulus will take a different route and he will take another. So Marulus is also ordered by Flavius to do the same as they have done it here. Here it was a joint venture. But once you go, you also drive away the public from the streets and I will also do the same. Wherever you perceive them thick, wherever you see a very good gathering, thick gathering, drive away the people. These growing feathers plucked from Caesar's wing will make him fly an ordinary pitch. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in servile fearfulness? So he says that if we do it, if we put a control over this popularity of Caesar, people gathering in the streets here and there, what does it signify? It signifies the growing popularity of Julius Caesar. But if we are able to drive away the people from the streets, then he wouldn't look so popular. Even he will feel a bit disappointed that I have achieved victory over Pompey's sons, but no one is here to welcome me. So it will make him hmm, fly a normal level. Otherwise, if every at every street there is a huge gathering to welcome him then he it will seem as if yes he is a very popular person flying very high but in order to bring him to a normal height that so that he should appear normal nothing some nothing extraordinary what are they planning to this driving away the public from the streets so in order to check on his growing popularity so Caesar is all of a sudden becoming very popular and very powerful. But if he doesn't see people on the streets, it will dampen him a little. It will disappoint him a little. Otherwise, they are of the opinion that otherwise if Caesar is allowed absolute sway, if he is given more power, he will make other Romans his slaves. Because if he is allowed to become too popular he is given if he is given the upper hand then what will happen the freedom of the roman people will be in danger and he will or he will julius caesar will keep the romans in a state of slavery he will make the romans his slaves so this is what i had told you in my summary also this is what even brutus was afraid of so People who were anti-Caesar, they were afraid that Caesar's growing popularity will make him fly too high. And from there, others would seem as if very small. So he wouldn't think of the others as humans only. He would make them his slaves. This is what Brutus believed and the supporters of Pompey believed. Yeah, I, f uh, I did not tell you one thing in my summary that Julius Caesar loved Brutus but in the civil war when Julius Caesar was fighting Pompey Brutus was fighting for Pompey he was on Pompey's side but after the war when Julius Caesar got a victory over Pompey he forgave Brutus and made him brought him back to him and made him his best friend he trusted brutus and at the request of brutus he also forgave cassius cassius was also fighting for pompey he was on the side of pompey but he forgave Ju uh, brutus made him his very close brought him very close to him made him his best friend trusted him and brutus made caesar forgive cassius also but this was one mistake which caesar made and he had to pay dearly for it forgiving cassius was a major mistake that he made anyway cassius is not here in this scene but in act one scene two you will see him and you will understand then only that how much jealous he is of julius caesar okay so this is your act one scene one it's not a very big scene it's not a very lengthy scene and in my next lecture next lecture it will be act one scene two 
and the festival of Leopardcal. It's quite a lengthy one. So buy for the time being. And yes, treasure chest also is there. So I will start it also in a few days. So no, this time I'll be more regular. You don't need to worry. Bye and have a nice week ahead.